Have you ever wondered why plants' leaves wilt? Well, it doesn't always have to do with water, and the addition of more water actually is going to cause more issues in some cases. So today's video, we're going to look at the signs behind wilting plant leaves and what you can do to mitigate it. And big hint here, it has a lot to do with the rates of the evapotranspiration, if you will. So wilting, very simply put, is a change in what we call turgor pressure. Turgor pressure is literally the pressure that keeps leaves upright and facing towards the sun. When this is reduced, we end up with wilted leaves. And the reason for this decrease in turgor pressure can be numerous. And number one reason is probably the most obvious reason, and that is lack of water. So turgor pressure wa works off of physical water. If the cells are not full of water, they begin to collapse. Once they collapse, the leaf begins to physically collapse with it. The remedy to this issue is to simply add water, which seems pretty obvious. However, you may not want to add water right away because the next two reasons for this wilting could actually cause more issues if you watered. Now you're probably lining yourself up for the second most obvious one, which is overwatering. So yes, overwatering can cause anaerobic conditions. These anaerobic conditions means your roots don't have access to oxygen, which it means they essentially just choke out. The other thing that can happen is anaerobic soils have a lot of bacterial issues, and these bacterial issues can destroy the roots. This destruction of the roots means that the roots are not uptaking the moisture that helps to keep the cells or the turgor pressure in place. So you can see how more water is not going to help in that instance. So this next one is very commonly seen in more of the vining plant world, and that is wilting due to heat. Now, the reason why this happens is because rates of evaporation increase in the event that the air is warmer. You combine that with the fact that your air could also be arid, such as where I am, because I'm not tropical whatsoever, and that actually expedites the water loss from these leaves even more. Now, the reason for why plants will respire in this higher level of heat and dry environment is simply because it needs to cool itself down, and that's one of the best ways it can actually do it. The issue here is that the roots are unable to uptake water fast enough to replace the water that's in the cells of the plant, which ultimately means they droop. Now, one fix to this would obviously be to increase the humidity in and around the leaves. Now, you can increase humidity, very obviously, by putting water on the leaves. But like I said, this mostly is found in these more vining plants, which means powdery mildew. So let's avoid that for now. What you can do is actually wait till the evening. Once the evening hits, your plants should come back and they should have this more rigid structure once the heat dissipates. If it does not have this more rigid structure once the heat dissipates, then that means your plant is actually under or over watered and therefore you want to assess or manage that next. The next one is actually happening right here, right now, and that is expedited rates of evaporation due to some sort of mechanical issue. So this bad boy got absolutely decimated by very heavy rain. No, this is stupid fog. We're gonna die. Golly. Like you can feel the air, you can feel the air coming through the vehicle right now. Like if this isn't our tornado, I don't know what it is. And as you can see, everything's really wilted. This is because rain, despite popular belief, is not gentle. It can perforate the leaves themselves. It actually hits so hard sometimes that it aids in soil compaction, oddly enough. So this poor plant was hit a little bit too hard with rain and this mechanical disruption put little mini holes everywhere, which in turn increase the rates of evaporation. This can also happen when you prune. If you go through and prune a plant, you will see something very similar to this in the event you prune too much and you opened up too many areas that allow for moisture to be lost through. This is one that I don't think people hear about very often and that is osmotic pressure. So osmotic pressure happens when the level of salts between the root and the soil are imbalanced. And this takes place when you fertilize. So this doesn't include just synthetic fertilizers. It also includes organic fertilizers. Now, given all of that, it takes a lot more organic to cause this, but it can still happen. And it particularly is true in the world of manures or animal debris, if you will. But regardless, the idea here 
is that the salt in the soil, the concentration, is causing water in the plant root to be pulled out through the osmotic barrier, which simply means salt moving from high to low concentrations, ultimately pulling water out of the cells and reducing the turgor pressure, which in turn causes the wilting. And this obviously can't be fixed very quickly, other than when in doubt, flush it out in hopes of washing away as much of that salt as possible. But that definitely is a cause that you may see. Now, with that being said, Geeker, you have to let me know in the comments down below if you've seen wilting before. If you have, why do you believe it happened? For me personally, I have seen a plant wilted due to lack of water, overwatering, as well as heat. I haven't seen osmotic pressure stress before, and I haven't actually seen it from pruning. However, I have seen it obviously from the wind or the rain causing enough damage to the plant to allow for that. Always forget to ask that. Hit the subscribe button. If you haven't, 60% of you are not. I can appreciate that as well. And I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.